Welcome to episode 18 of My Imperfect Knitting Life. This is my space where I talk about my knitting, connect with other people around the world that enjoy knitting uh, podcasts or vlogs, and I talk a bit about my mini commercial spinning mill and also a little bit about life. So it is two months since I did my last podcast and we've had summer and Christmas and New Year and you know it's a very busy time um, in the southern hemisphere it's actually a crazy busy time because everything is like crammed up into one well basically two months whereas in the northern hemisphere you have your summer holidays etc in the middle of the year and then you have this bright little um, point of winter where you have Christmas whereas for us all the financial stuff's crammed in there all the socializing stuff you know you think about your garden um, spring cleaning all of that it's all in one go anyway I digress so what I want to do today is to catch you up with uh, my knitting which is quite minimal in the summer I must say so I've only got two things to show you and then I will tell you about the the, the mill what my plan is over the next few videos is to actually take you down into the mill and show you where we're at, where, where I'm at and what, what's going on in the mill, how the machines work. If you watch Junction Fibre, they've already done that and it's great, but you know, it's a way of me showing you what I am doing in my mill, how the setup is, what I'm able to achieve, and also I want to update you with what I call the room at the top in the mill. And that is an area where I have the washing station set up and the felt loom and it's going to be a good creative space I hope. So let me get going with my knitting. So the first thing that I'm going to show you is actually what I'm wearing. And this is uh, Pretty in Pink. I think it's by Melanie Berg. And I'll pop a picture in of the pattern right here. Um, I got it off Ravelry and I knitted it in Holst Garn. So I don't, I don't love it. I don't think it's very flattering. It is very light. Um, and I actually have given it to my sister, but have borrowed it back just to show you a finished product. So, um, it's knitted from the top down, and you can see it's got quite a wide neck, so if I ever knitted it again myself, I think I would make the neck smaller. The little lace pattern is actually very cute, you can see it, it wasn't too difficult, but I have definitely had an imperfect knitting life with this uh, top, because um, the holster yarn kind of is sticks together a little bit and um, I dropped stitches and knitted a couple of stitches together and then I kind of adjusted it or I went back and it became quite frustrating because um, I'd actually knitted about that much when I discovered a dropped stitch up here and then I was like I am not undoing that entire lace pattern again so I basically afterwards just sort of picked the stitch up at the back and sewed it in and then I also did a similar thing at the front I didn't even notice I dropped a stitch until later and that little fix up isn't as good however I love the color and I do love the the drape and yeah short sleeve oh, I've got a bruise there but never mind um there's lots of birds flying around outside at the moment. So that's uh, Melanie Berg's Pretty in Pink. It, it really was actually quite a, um, took a long time I think, and that's probably because of the needle size and the yarn. And if I did it again, I definitely would not do it in the holst. Um, I mean, I have knitted quite a few things in Holst Garn, as you know, if you've looked at my previous podcasts, but I've always knitted it with mohair. And I definitely would knit Holst Garn again with mohair, but I wouldn't knit that little single strand um, in a top again. I might try it in something like from Prosper Yarn or something like that. It really needs something like a linen. So this is a wool cotton mix. Um, and that, you know, I do like the wool in it, but maybe, and the cotton, you know, gives it a heavier 
drape but I think I would like to try it maybe in a in a wool linen mix and see how that goes and as I say smaller neck but overall it's okay you know I'm wearing it with a little slip I actually found that it just keeps falling off you know falling off didn't like that so not a very positive <laughs> start on the knitting but I did finish it and I was really happy about that and I would actually I do like the pattern I would recommend the pattern and if, especially if you like knitting like things it's an easy to take with you pattern um, the lace was not difficult I enjoyed that um, but I just don't like the finished garment and I think that's one of the things with knitting is you know you knit because you love knitting but sometimes at the end of it you've put a lot of time and effort in but you haven't ended up with what you think you're going to end up with or um, something that you love and so if I can find somebody else at the end of it who enjoys it then it's just a lot easier for me to, to, to pass it on and move on to something else anyway second item is um, Judy talked to me last year Judy is my um, friend that's been on the podcast with me and she is often coming to help me in the mill and we do she does bees she's very helpful with the bees um, she actually chooses it as well but she said to me why don't we do um, our own little knit along and so um, she suggested that we do the Alpine Bloom because it's something that quite a few people are doing at the moment I think Caitlin Hunter does the Alpine Bloom if I I might have got them completely muddled up but anyway um, so I decided I do the Alpine Bloom and of course being um, Christmas New Year I thought no I'm going to stash dive I don't want to buy any more full ply yarn I literally had two um, plastic boxes full of full ply yarn and I thought I'm sure I can find something in there so I can't even remember the name of the yarn I know it was done by Peacock Yarns um, and I bought it a couple of years ago at Woolfest in Auckland but um, I sort of balled up the yarn to make um, I think a lovage and then I just decided I didn't like that didn't like it I didn't want to do it so not the lovage but I didn't like my color combo I didn't love the yarn so it just sort of sat in the naughty bucket for a little while and then I undid it so I thought use something you've got now I didn't have a variegated color and for a lot of um, I'll pop a picture in here of um, other people's um, Alpine blooms and you can see some people have done a contrast of a light and a dark uh, I didn't have enough of a dark color to do all of the pattern in a, one color so I had to split it up and I didn't have a variegated yarn so it just I oh, just thought I would bite the bullet and make it in three colors so what I'm going to do is just quickly whip off this top and Hopefully it doesn't come off the needles. I'll show you that one. All right, so I, of course, have changed a few things. I really like how it sits on me. Um, I like it that it's higher up on the neck. And you can see here for the flowers and the leaves and the flower, I've actually separated the colors out with what I've got. And I quite like these colors. They're retro to me and um, it's a short sleeve so it's it's quite good for intermediate weather so whether it's um, you know spring autumn even in winter if I've got something warm underneath I think it's going to be great um, because it's I, I, what I do remember about the yarn and what I can feel in the yarn is it does have nylon so it's probably going to wash like a rag um, which is going to be great as well uh, I don't mind taking care of my my knits I quite enjoy um, washing them and putting them out but Judy thought that mine was a little bit you know the fabric was a bit tight because when she's knitting her colors she leaves the, the big loops whereas I um, weave mine in quite a bit I can just okay I'm back <laughs> um, so Judy lives, lives quite long loops between hers and because I weave mine in a lot she reckons that's maybe why my fabric isn't quite as soft as hers 
but quite frankly I think when I block it out uh, and start wearing it it'll be absolutely fine for me maybe not for anybody else but I'll be happy with that so basically those are my two nets I mean we've had weather uh, I know that it gets hotter in a lot of other places but we've had weather that's around um, 29 degrees 27 degrees and I really do not cope um, with the heat I love spring and I love autumn I even quite like winter if I'm toasty warm inside but summer is really difficult for me um, I can only go out in the early morning and the evening I find it too hot to be out doing anything in the middle of the day and I must say when I tell you about the mill there is one thing in there that does make that a little bit easier but generally I mean it's a great time of the year because everything's pumping the gardens pumping um, you know that's when the sheep get shorn you get to see your family a lot and do all sorts of things and then of course you know it's like I say our summer we have Christmas and New Year in there um, and just a, you know a couple of things like flowers beautiful flowers I just love these little flowers and get to pick them out of the garden um, and I just make the most of it all because when it's gone it's gone and then we had sit and hibernate for the winter okay so I finished talking about my knitting and I thought I would start talking about the mill so I have a little list here because it's been such a long time since um, I saw you last or did a podcast and um, a lot's happened in that time so Mike the carding guy came and he finalized the little settings on the carding machine and it's been going so much better since then what he also suggested was that I adjust the um, the driver so the motor driver so that the speed range was greater so that I could choose what speed the fleece went in because he reckons that that does make an, a, a difference in terms of how it runs I might have to ask him a little bit about how to finalize that but um, that's definitely an improvement um, and then after he fixed the carding machine um, I had problems with the picker and the picker got jammed it was full I mean like seriously the amount of fleece that I got out of that that machine was probably two cats worth or something it was just so much and um, it was a nightmare really because I could I couldn't actually get in there was this tiny little hole about that big and then I got my little gun thing that has the spinner on it and I poked it in and got most of that out then I couldn't get into it any other way other than putting um, sliding a pruning saw between um, the roller and there's like this little rubbery bit that holds it down and just being very patient and pulling it out pulling it out and there was still stuff stuck at the bottom so um, somehow at the back is like a metal um, portal metal piece uh, plate and if you remove that then you can get everything out so I managed to get my hand in and around that and pull it out but I can't get to the back of the machine to do that so I had a bright idea and I thought oh we could move the machine um, you know weighs I don't know how much a ton or whatever we could move the machine out and then I'd be able to get behind it so Roger and uh, Ian spent some couple of hours doing that they moved the machine out but after the machine was moved the gap between the dunny where it collects the fleece and the machine I couldn't squeeze in there it was so narrow so now I, I can't even get to the little wee hole let alone around the back so we're going to have to make a plan to make that happen um yeah so those are the two main things oh and in the mill but the other really big thing was for the mill itself was we have an evaporative cooler which I think is also called a swamp cooler and that um, has been sitting outside since we got the machines and we did have an evaporative cooler inside but th that area is so big it didn't make a lot of difference um, it would take it down maybe one degree so I had to really consider getting the swamp cooler put in so Roger built a, a platform and I'll, I'll take you down I'll actually have to make a little video and 
and the next one will you know like as I say we'll go through each of the machines but where it is we set it up in what was going to be a door so that we didn't damage the walls and connected it to water so if you don't know how an evaporative cooler works basically you have water that is drawn up in a pump and then there's a frame at the top and then it just runs down over this sort of cardboard um, concertina board that's on on four, three sides of the the swamp cooler and then with the fan going it sort of cools the air and takes moisture in so it increases the humidity in the um, mill which makes it better for the machines to work and we set that up and we put the um, hose pipe in which is connected to my rainwater tank and then the next morning I went out and I said to Roger oh my gosh the water's just been running out of the, the swamp cooler um, and I we turned it off and then had to YouTube how to um, get into the machine and look at it and blow me down when we opened it up the stopcock wasn't working and so it had just been running water basically overnight I think into the paddock which in itself created another problem <laughs> so the swamp cooler does work we've um, fixed it up James came round and um, replaced the stopcock sort of did a clean up and a service in there and there was actually the pump as well in the move had fallen into the water and some of it needs to be out and some needs to be in I'm waffling I hope that this is like not too boring just fast forward if it's boring but like I said it's a really good way of me recording what um, what what I've done in the mill so that got all fixed up and another thing that happened was I bought a felt loom when I was in the States my sister and I bought this felt loom and it's been sitting up here in this area which I'm going to talk about soon as well but I didn't want to take it down to the mill until that top room had been sorted and by sorted I mean it was a wreck so it's been kind of relined um, with what well, framed so there's been some framing put in and insulated we had the gas caliphant put in for um, washing the, the the wool which is um, set at 75 degrees um, Celsius which is nice and hot and then two lovely deep commercial sinks and I got a speed queen I mean a Maytag uh, spinner and um, then we lined the walls with ply just like here and just like down in the mill and um, it you know it looks amazing it's just been so much work for Roger he basically spent his uh, summer holidays fitting that out in between golf and a little bit of kayaking and what have you but a lot of time and energy went in, has gone into that room and it's now um, being finished off as we speak the Sparky has come back from his holiday and honestly so kindly coming on a Saturday morning he turned up here at six o'clock in the morning to finish off the electrics so that we can um, have some lights and have some sockets working down there he's he's to the wire at the moment and I have got a couple of things I need to fine-tune but I will talk to him about that later after his big jobs done um, so the felt looms down there but before it went down I did start actually um, practicing with some stuff so in the felt loom in the sorry on the felt loom you can make fabric um, out of um, fleece so the very first one that I did and this is all you know I want to show it to you but this is all made from waste product things that okay, went underneath the carding machine or in the uh, vacuum attached to the spinner or just little bits that I put on the side uh, in the mill and I just put them in big plastic sacks and with the idea that I would be able to use them in the felt loom and I have so that's been so much fun Ollie made um, a big cushion for her mum for Christmas that's my daughter-in-law and Charlotte's made herself a sort of blankety cushiony rug thing that she's got in her room that she loves I'll pop pictures up of both of those as, as we're going along here and I made myself a cushion so I'm not sure if you remember let me see where is that oh 
I dyed some of Anna Gretton's fleece um, to make into yarn and I did do that but um, some of it at the bottom of the pot had felted because of the heat was too high and I thought oh I'll keep that I'll make something out of it and I have I have made one cushion and I've got enough of these little pieces to make two they won't be the same but they'll be matching um, cushions and I attached the piece that I made to a European pillowcase that I bought and that is this I love it you know I can choose which way around I have it I'll show you a picture of it on I put it on my little um, retro cushion uh, retro lounge suite but I have a bigger leather one that I want to put the three matching pillows on together um, and I did you know I've done some other ones as well this is one I put the I put the colors on but afterwards I've started embellishing it a little bit by putting uh, this on with a, a single needle dry felting and then I'm going to do some outlines and embellish it and then stick it through the through the um, felt loom again and see how that goes so we'll see how that happens um, so that's the felt loom I think there's a lot of opportunity I actually have another product that I'm um, in the middle of um, making and I have a name I'm going to call them petal pots and it is something that will cover um, a pot you know a plant pot and I'm not ready to show it yet but when I am I will show you um, and they're going to be really nice easy to post um, and that's also you know this is my ethos I want to use as much of the fleece as I can and what I've really worked out is that when the fleece doesn't want to go through the pin drafter or go onto the um, spinner it's actually really really good for the felt machine and I've suggested to Roger that what we do is we actually um, set it up for making bats um, so um, if you're not familiar bats is actually um, it doesn't go into so the slide is basically like a coil it's a, a, a rope really of fleece but if you don't have the um, if you don't make it into a rope you can actually make it into like a, a blanket or a, a mat and if you're a felter you know that you, you bats are great for making felt and you can layer it so if I set up that bat roller I could actually just do a whole load of um, fiber ready for felting and it will be even and it will save me from having waste product that I'm gonna you know I would have put in the garden probably because it was too short and um, and then I'm gonna make my cushions and I can make honestly cot blankets blankets wool hangings I mean there's so many things to make that it's actually quite exciting that the, the, the products that you can do with that but okay so that's that's the felt machine and the wash station I'm going to show some pictures of that as well that's all set up so we've actually had a hell of a lot of progress and and from now on it's really going to be um, kitting the room out and I've got some ideas about how I'm going to do that and in the next um, few podcasts I'm going to talk about that and show how I do it and bring you along that journey with me so we're going to be moving a lot more down into the mill now because all the crafty stuff is going to be down there now you can see that I'm actually not in the space that I, I normally am um, in the bedroom well crafty bedroom but I ended up having to um, make that into a proper bedroom because we're getting lots of visitors and guests staying and I want um, don't want them to have you know yarn and fleece all over the place um, it's you know not very nice for them and also my plan literally has been let, let's try and get everything out of the house separate you know all the fleece and the yarn from home because I'm working from home I don't want it to be in the house taking over so we're at that point that we can do it and I will when we get down to the mill I'm going to reset up my um, 
a little corner to do my podcasts down there. But this is still going to be my work area, so I can do my laptop and my printing, and it's just such a lovely space. Um, maybe I should just give you a little quick show. I mean, I know I've put it up on Instagram, but, you know, this area here was previously... Um, I used to call it one of our dead areas because oh, oh I just messed that up didn't I I used to call it a dead area because it was it was unlined it was really ugly and um, we didn't use it for anything other than just literally shoving uh, chicken food shoes boxes rubbish and I was just like I just can't live like that that's in the house we didn't like it and so my son Dean who was a builder at the time he's not doing that anymore he's doing something else but he came and he lined it and just made the most beautiful space for us um, and I really feel like we have made the most of it right now and I don't want to change it but we'll have a new and different space down in the mill. And in fact, I probably could just alternate where I want to do recordings because today is quite quiet, but often it's busy. People are passing up and down the hallway. And because this is in a quite open area, you know, you're very exposed to all those. So I'm not sure if when I did my last podcast, I talked to you about a spin-in that I did. Um, well, I actually did a thing in Tauranga, which was good fun. I think I actually had talked about that, but I might put in a couple of pictures in case I didn't. But there's also a spin-in in January, which is the first spin-in of the year in New Zealand. And it's in it's in Morrinsville. And they put on a really good um, day for, for the spinners. And um, it's hot. It's, you know, it was a really hot day. It was blindingly hot when you went outside. And... Um, I went along and I didn't really have any expectation of selling very much because to me I'm like it's middle of summer people have just had Christmas I'm sure that they're all thinking about um, not spending money at that point because let's face it um, New Year or January is usually when people want to tighten their financial belts tighten their virtual belts go on diets um, try and get rid of stuff and so I didn't really think that it was going to be um, a great selling day. And um, But I did want to try and provide something for spinners. So I, I did some dyeing of some roving. And um, so this is one of the colorways that I did. And I haven't actually spun any of that up myself, but it's a Corriedale. It's lovely and soft. And then I did another one. this one here and I just I love the colors in this look oh so gorgeous um, I sold all of that so I do have somebody who's asked me if I have any more because she didn't buy enough and I'm like honestly I just literally do a small batch I'm not I might be able to get a similar color but I can't even guarantee I'd repeat that and I was just really trying, <laughs> trying to get some product for spinners um, and I'll have a look around and see what I can find for her. I was going to make this into a, a cushion, but maybe I'll have to see if there's enough there for her to, to, to use. Anyway, I did put that up onto my spinner, and this is the product. This is what came out. I just do love the colours. Um, I've got another one which I think I opened. No, no didn't open it, but look. Don't you love that? So rich and gorgeous. So I'm going to use that probably for myself. Um, and I reckon that would be so nice in something like a pressed flowers or a yoke color work. Something like that. So those are those two. The other thing that I did was I went with my sister in December and um, I saw on Facebook Marketplace that someone was giving away a chick pen, a chicken pen, and said, um, come and pick it up. So I contacted the guy and he said, yes, it's free. Um, I didn't remember this, but, but he said, bring muscle. And when I got there, I realized why we were meant to bring muscle because it was right at the back of his 
pretty yard la pretty large yard right at the back behind the fence he's got his chickens and that was where it was and it was quite a heavy a-framed um, run and then a metal x dog kennel which he'd converted and it was only my sister and i that um, turned up and he said to me oh did you do you have a partner and i said yep he said oh did you did you see the bit where i said bring muscle and i was like eh, sorry didn't didn't see that bit but anyway we managed uh, between the three of us to haul it down to the um, trailer and pop it on so when we got back to the trailer he says to me oh hello little red hello little red good morning oh here we go here she is um so when we got back to the trailer he told me that he had some sheep and showed us his man shed which was awesome just hang on i just got to open the door for ed oh no she's gone back and um where are you going red come here And so when we got back to the trailer, he showed us his man shed, which was fantastic. Like he likes his hunting and making things. And he had lots and lots of little collectibles that he, he enjoys. And we had a little look around his shed and um, he told us about his sheep. And I then told him about my mill. And he was like, oh, well, I've got some Arapawa fleece here. And I'm... Um, when people say out of power, I'm usually like, mm, probably not going to go through the mill okay. Because it's actually a very short staple. Um, if you don't know what out of power is, it's a feral sheep of New Zealand, which I think is kind of originated from a, a type of merino. And yeah, they actually shed if the, once it gets to a certain length, they start shedding it, I think. Someone told me that. Um... But generally, it's quite a short staple, and so not great for machine going through the mill. But anyway, he showed me his um, Arapawa, which um, Judy or somebody else told me, oh, well, it must be a cross because the staple was long. It was about 10 centimeters, and I had to cut the tips off it, and then I washed it and put it through um, the carder. And I came up with two different... Um, batches of yarn I'm going to show it to you this was the first one I did and it's beautiful it's out of power mixed with a bit of Romney it's super squishy um, and I would I personally could wear this next to skin maybe not that color but I could wear this next to skin and it's really bouncy could, and I, you know, I couldn't make a fine yarn out of it. Judy and I are on a mission to try and make a, a, a finer yarn. So like a, a five ply or a sport weight and to be able to consistently make a double knit or an eight ply. At the moment, everything's like Aran or Worsted. Could even be a little bit more than Aran, but it's a pretty heavy weight. I mean, it knits very comfortably on a five and a half, six millimeter needle. And so that was the first one that I made, and that was mixed with the cream Romney. Um, and then it was the Outer Power, which was gray and brown in a lot of places, and we came out with this beautiful mid brown. And then I had dyed up black some Romney, and so I mixed the Outer Power with the, the black. Romney and look how nice that is same again it's quite it's a dark gray it's really such a nice bouncy yarn I have actually knit a little sample of uh, in it I was knitting for listen I've got to face up I did another video and when I uploaded it it was a nightmare and then once I got it onto YouTube I realized you know my son said to me Mum, nothing less than 1080p, uh, otherwise the, the picture quality is terrible. It was 460 and it looked like I had filmed a 1970s series and put it on the YouTube. And I was like, no, I just can't even put up with that. So I, I deleted it and I've started again this morning. 
Um, you can hear the cockerel going in the background maybe. Uh, it's pretty early still, I think 7.30. But I am definitely going to get this podcast up today and ready for going down to the mill. We're going in mill in the next few weeks. So, so yeah, where is my little sample that I measured? Here it is. So Chris, the guy that I got the um, fleece from, wanted a beanie. I don't know if this is going to fit him, but it's a free pattern. can't remember. I think it's called a simple beanie or something like that. But I think that's the right side, a broken rib. Um, but it's super squishy. I'm not sure how this little... Yep, super squishy. And I am knitting that on a 5 millimeter needle. And it was a very quick knit, very nice. Um, what else? What else? What else? What else? Let's see. Oh, so with one of my first felted bits, I covered a sponge. It's actually a furniture sponge or furniture. Yeah. Um, and made a felting mat, which was pretty cool. What else did I do? I got some honey out of my beehive which was just amazing beautiful honey it smells so good i borrowed an extractor from judy and um, managed to get eight frames off the beehive um, you have to do it before um, the tutin um, flowers because there's a beetle on there that can um well not the tutin no beetle there's um toxins in the in the pollen that can actually um, affect humans so you have to do it before the tooth and flowers and that's usually after the new year so yep had to get it out and I think the rest of the honey I'm going to leave on for the bees for winter so that they don't need too much feeding and they will just take their hive down to however small they need it to be to get through the winter anyway I digress what else did we do um did the felting. Oh, I went to Coromandel um, to go and pick up some fleece. So Roger and I, on, on one of our days, um, got up really early and took a drive. It's about a three, three and a half hour drive, I think. And um, we went down to the Coromandel to visit a friend. And this friend has um, some sheep and so clean. Some of the cleanest fleece I've, I've had so far looks after his sheep beautifully and he's got this little shed that he um, had them shorn in and just left it in a big pile and I went through and I just sorted out what I wanted and left um, what I left actually still was amazing but it was really short fine um, fiber or staples and I thought you're just going to make problems for yourself be strong and leave it so I did but it was a lovely drive there and um, back and Roger and I like doing these sort of trips for the talking. Well, I like it for the talking. I would much rather stay at home. I'm such a homebody, but he loves to go places. So I go with him. And um, yeah, so we had a good time there and came back the same day. Okay, I think I've actually gone through everything I wanted to talk about today. Um, so on the cards for next um, podcast is we will actually go down to the mill and I will start taking you around in, in short videos and show you where we're at at the moment and then over the next few months we'll keep revisiting down there and I can show you what the progress has been and what we've done because we do have plans we need a big lean to being built down there so we can put all of the wool fadges of um, fleece down there and out of the the garage so i can put my car away again and just clear up heaps of stuff that's lying around and just get organized so watch the space thank you so much for joining me i really appreciate um just all the lovely comments and feedback and i hope to see you next time thanks bye